If you've played the Oregon Trail, then you know cholera is a harrowing illness that killed many a pioneer. But what exactly is cholera, and why are people still getting it? Hey there, bankers from Boston and carpenters from Ohio. Trace here for DNews. While many of us only know it from the game Oregon Trail, cholera is a real infection with real consequences. In 2010, Haiti was hit with a massive earthquake. UN workers arrived to help, but possibly also brought cholera along with them. Haiti had not had a cholera outbreak in more than 50 years, but the 2010 outbreak left about 790,000 people sick and over 9,000 dead. We wanted to know what exactly is this disease and what does it do? Cholera is a bacterial infection caused by Vibrio cholerae. Only about 1 in 10 people affected develop symptoms, but those that do must get treatment quickly and can experience excessive watery diarrhea, vomiting, and abdominal cramping. Cholera can kill a healthy individual within hours if they are not treated properly. According to Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, the incubation period for the disease is about 12 hours to four and a half days. Cholera affects the digestive tract by releasing cholerogen, or cholera toxin, a protein that attacks the gut, causing the watery diarrhea. Because those affected are losing so much fluid, it leaves them severely dehydrated. This can cause hypovolemic shock, or an extreme loss of the body's fluid. This loss of fluid literally makes the blood thicken, which causes problems with circulation and keeps it from reaching organs. This also happens during regular old dehydration and can lead to death if a patient isn't hydrated immediately. Because the loss of fluid is the major symptom, the primary treatment is fast and plentiful rehydration. In areas of the world where cholera outbreaks are common, doctors keep rehydration packets, IV fluids, and salts on hand. I know you're probably thinking salt makes you thirsty, but it's also an important part of life. Without salt, our body can't move fluids around easily. So these packets contain sodium for water movement and glucose, which was discovered to accelerate fluid movement by research published in The Lancet in 1978. They called it the most important medical advance of the century. There are also antibiotics for cholera. However, rapid rehydration is the most important step in saving lives. Today we know that cholera is often transmitted through fecally contaminated water and food. But back in the early 19th century, physicians thought it was caused by bad odors or miasmas rising up from the sewers and open graves. A British physician by the name of John Snow, no, not that John Snow, this guy actually knows something. Snow theorized that something else was responsible because the main symptoms were not in the lungs, but in the digestive tract. Instead of breathing in the source of cholera, Snow believed patients ingested it. During an outbreak in Soho, London in 1854, Snow mapped the cases of cholera and found that there was an epicenter to the outbreak. The Broad Street water pump was surrounded by the highest incidences of the disease, which led Snow to believe it was contaminated water that was the culprit. He published his findings in a book in 1855. It's actually a pretty fascinating read. Also in 1854, in Florence, Italy, Filippo Piccini published a paper describing the microorganism that caused the disease, and in 1884, Robert Koch isolated the bacteria and described how the cholera was spread. Since then, the disease has mostly been eradicated in developed countries with proper sanitation. Each year, cholera affects 1.3 to 4 million people and causes 21,000 to 143,000 deaths worldwide. There are several regions still affected around the world, including India, much of Africa, and most recently, Haiti. After much investigation into the 2010 Haitian earthquake response, it's thought that some Nepalese UN workers may have had cholera in their systems, since Nepal was dealing with an outbreak of their own. Because the septic tanks the UN workers used emptied into a landfill that was close to a river which was used for drinking and bathing, they spread that cholera to the local population. In August 2016, the UN admitted that they played a part in the outbreak and they're planning to help with financial support. Are you on Snapchat? Because so are we, and we've got some really cool stories about science and so much more every week on Seeker. Do us a favor, open up your Snapchat app, pause the video, and scan this code. We'll be looking for your ideas in the messages. See you all there. Are you interested in other diseases like, for example, leprosy? Check out this video about what leprosy does to your body. Have you ever been to a nation stricken with cholera? What precautions did you take? Let us know down in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe so you get more D-News.